So after the multiple choice section, we now go on to section B, which is the, the longer answer questions. Uh, so first of all, question 21. This question here comes up in so many past papers. So state what is meant by a vector quantity and give one example, so not two, not three, just one. So a vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction. Straightforward, just recall there. And one example is I've just given velocity, but there's so many different vectors that you need to know about. So you need to have a good list of maybe five, six, seven vectors. Uh, sorry, uh, vectors and also some scalars. The next one, we then have uh, something which is moving around this circular track. So calculate the speed. Well, the speed is equal to distance over time. Uh, and because we're looking at the speed here, the distance it goes in that time is equal to 2 pi r. Uh, divided by the times one, one rotation, which is 20, and that gives a value of 0 0.188. And I've given my answer here as 0 0.19 to make sure it's to two significant figures, just like the raw data that we have in the question here. So 0 0.19 metres per second. Okay, uh, the next one here is, uh, I think the key word is really explain the graph shown here. So basically what we have here is we have a graph of the displacement from position A and therefore it increases from zero up to a maximum of 1.2 after 10 seconds. This is because the radius is 0 0.6 so the diameter when it goes from A to C must be 1.2 metres uh, and that's at a time of 10 seconds and it's a symmetrical graph. So you get marks here for maybe kind of giving some... Um, you know, maybe a bit of a something about the description here, as well as a mark for actually kind of putting the distance here. Uh, maybe, you know, the fact that you get credit for putting about it being symmetrical as well. Question C, I thought was particularly difficult. I'd say that 99% of the time you just get a nice simple right angle triangle. So first of all, you basically have two forces acting. You've got a force to the right and then a force up to the left. And what I've done is I've calculated the resultant of these two forces. So here I have my uh, 7 newtons to the right and my 5 newtons at an angle of 45, 40 degrees. This means that this line here is my resultant force between the, the start of this arrow and the end of that one. So what I then did was I calculated effectively the vertical component of that, uh, which is going to be equal to 5 times sine 40 to give the length of this side here. And then this side here is equal to 7 this way minus 5 cos uh, 40 over here. So this, the length of this side here is equal to 7 minus 5 cos 40. To work out the size of force F, I then just used um, some trigonometry, so some, uh, sorry, some Pythagoras. So you've got uh, a squared equals b squared plus, plus c squared. So I put the numbers into my calculator, so I've got the si this side squared plus this side squared, and then I square rooted it to find the size of the force. And the force is 4.5141. And again, I kept the full number in my calculator. But we want to know the acceleration of the object, and acceleration is equal to force divided by the mass. We just worked out the force. The mass, again, it's given it to us in grams. We've got to convert that into kilograms. Uh, so the force of 4.5141 over 0 0.320 equals 14.1. And again, I've given my final answer to two significant figures, so 14 metres per second squared. But I thought that this one here was a, a particularly uh, tricky question. And uh, that's it. So the next video I've got is all about question 22.